in the world of cameras every now and then, a moment comes that changes everything. Nikon has been known to make waves before, but this time it feels different. For months there have been rumors, speculation, and a lot of silence from Nikon's camp. But now, the silence is about to break. A camera, hidden in the shadows of development, is about to see the light. The Nikon ZV, a name we're hearing more of. But what's behind it? A new era for videographers? Or perhaps something more? Only time will tell, but the clues are already here. Let's see how far Nikon is willing to go. Let's begin with the Nikon Z6 Mark III, which came out in 2024. It was a big step forward for Nikon, and it's likely laying the foundation for the rumored ZV. The Z6 Mark III brought a lot to the table with its 24.5 megapixel stack sensor, offering around three and a half times faster readout speeds compared to its predecessor. Pair that with Xspeed 7 image processor, and we got 6K video at 60 frames per second, not to mention 4K at 120 frames per second. But here's the thing, Z6 Mark III, while impressive, wasn't perfect. It had solid video capabilities, but it didn't quite cross into the realm of a true video powerhouse. This is where the ZV is about to take over. Imagine taking everything great about Z6 Mark III and pushing it further, we're talking serious enhancements here, turning Nikon's focus fully onto videography. Now, let's talk design. ZV is rumored to take inspiration from the Sony FX3, a compact cinema-focused camera that's been a major player in the video world. It is expected to look and feel similar, small, rugged, and all about functionality. If you've handled Z30 before, you might already have a sense of what we could be looking at here. This design choice makes sense. Cameras like Sony FX3 have set the standard for compact, video-first bodies, and Nikon seems to be heading in that direction too. With no electronic viewfinder, the focus shifts entirely to video performance. It's a bold move, but one that could put Nikon on the map in the world of professional video. Now, if there's one thing that's going to make or break this camera, it's the sensor. ZV is likely to use the same 24.5 megapixel sensor from the Z6 Mark III. But the exciting part? Nikon could be tweaking it specifically for video. This sensor has already proven its worth, but we're expecting Nikon to tweak it specifically for video, giving creators the kind of dynamic range, color accuracy, and sharpness that would rival cinema cameras. Think about it. With 6K video at 60 frames per second, we're already entering pro-level territory. Now, what's interesting is that this isn't just Nikon trying to play catch up with Sony or Canon. It's Nikon stepping up and saying, we can do it better. And if you've ever worked with the Sony A7S III or FX3, you know how important high quality video is in today's content driven world. Nikon's ZV could just be the camera to challenge those models. Now, for the video enthusiasts out there, this is where it gets exciting. We're talking 6K at 60 frames per second in Nikon's NRAW format. For those unfamiliar with NRAW, it's Nikon's proprietary format that delivers uncompressed video quality, giving filmmakers all the flexibility they need in post-production. But it doesn't end there. ZV could also shoot in 4K at 120 frames per second. Now, if you're thinking, wait, that sounds like the Sony FX3 again, you'd be right, but Nikon could be adding its own twist. In addition to this, there's word that Full HD at 240 frames per second will be possible. For those into slow motion shooting, 
that's a dream. Canon R5C offers something similar, but then Nikon adds in-body stabilization and electronic VR. That means you get a more stable shooting experience, even handheld. The fact that Nikon is potentially adding features like anamorphic shooting, custom aspect ratios, and even shutter angle control means that they're truly targeting the filmmakers here. These are the kinds of options we'd usually expect from cameras like the Panasonic Lumix GH6 or even higher-end cinema cameras. So, what we're hoping to see is Nikon giving creators all the tools they need to produce professional-grade content right out of the box. One of the biggest pain points for videographers especially when shooting in high resolutions and frame rates, is overheating. Canon knows this all too well with its EOS R5 overheating issues, but Nikon seems to be learning from those mistakes. We hope to see an active cooling system in the ZV, allowing you to shoot for extended periods without the dreaded overheating shutdown. Now, if you've ever shot long takes or high frame rate footage, you know how crucial this is. It's often the difference between finishing a project smoothly or dealing with constant interruptions. Nikon's commitment to ensuring uninterrupted recording could make the ZV a significant step, particularly for documentary filmmakers or content creators working on tight schedules. If there's one area where Nikon might take things up a notch, it's audio we've heard that ZV could feature 32-bit audio support. For those unfamiliar, this provides much higher fidelity compared to the standard 24-bit PCM, making a noticeable difference in post-production. This feature alone could elevate ZV for those who demand high-quality sound in their videos. Multiple USB-C ports are also on the table, with one dedicated to data transfer external recording and power, and another for audio input. The flexibility here could be an advantage for multi-device setups. If you're used to working with external recorders like the Atomos Ninja, this level of connectivity will feel like a dream. Compare that to something like the Canon EOS R5C, which has solid video specs but lacks in the audio department and you can see why Nikon's potential setup would be a significant win for professionals. Now, this might be the exciting part of the story. Nikon acquired RED in 2024 and we are hoping that the collaboration with RED will pay off in ZV. RED has long been known for its high-end cinema cameras like the Komodo and Raptor. These cameras are in a league of their own when it comes to color science and professional formats like RED Code RAW. With RED's tech potentially finding its way into ZV, we're looking at a camera that might just deliver some of the best color reproduction we've seen from Nikon yet. This collaboration could also bring features like XLR inputs and SDI outputs, which would cater directly to filmmakers working in high-end productions. If Nikon can pull this off, they'll be stepping into the world of true cinema-grade gear, a space currently dominated by brands like RED and ARRI. A camera is only as good as its usability, and Nikon is likely keeping that in mind with ZV. We're expecting a tilting 3.2-inch touchscreen that should give users more control while shooting, particularly in tricky angles. If you've used cameras like the Panasonic S5, you'll appreciate just how important a flexible screen is, especially when you're shooting run-and-gun style or vlogging. Then, there's the dual memory card setup. CF Express Type B and SD card slots will give users the flexibility to shoot high bitrate video without the fear of running out of storage. Compare this to the Sony A7 IV, 
which only offers a single CF Express slot. And you can see where Nikon might be giving users an edge in the workflow department. Now, let's talk about the potential downside, the price. With all these features, we're expecting the Nikon ZV to sit comfortably in the higher price bracket, likely out of reach for casual shooters. This might be a tough pill to swallow for some, especially when competitors like the Panasonic GH6 offer similar features at a lower cost. But for those who need the power and versatility that ZV promises, it could be worth every penny. As for the release, we're looking at a quarter three or quarter four launch in 2025. It's still a while away, but if Nikon nails this release, we could see the ZV becoming a must-have tool for filmmakers, content creators, and anyone looking to push their video game to the next level. In a market crowded with options, Nikon is making a bold move with ZV. It's not just about keeping up with the competition, it's about taking the lead by building on the strengths of the Z6 Mark III and incorporating technology from RED. Nikon could be positioning itself as a strong contender in the video first camera world. We'll be watching closely as more details emerge. Will Nikon rise to the challenge? Only time will tell. Let us know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more camera news and reviews.